is quite a good question. Let me show you how this one works because some students do get quite confused. So what we have here and what I want you to see immediately is that we have two scenarios. We've got this scenario where the angles used are theta and theta. Then in this scenario, that is a beta. That means we are going to be using two completely different triangles. So what I would do is I would draw two cast diagrams. You don't want to put them on the same cast diagram. It can cause confusion. So I'm going to do that. And we can say, for example, that this is going to be our theta triangle. And then this will be our beta triangle. Okay. So for the first one, the theta triangle, actually I'm changing up all the colors here. Let me make this nice. So let's do that in pink and then let's do that in blue. Here we go. Look how cool that is guys. I didn't even plan that. So in the first triangle, the blue one, we're going to say that sin theta is positive. See that it's positive. So that means we could be in um, this quadrant or this quadrant because that's where sin can be positive. But then they say that theta must be less than 90. So that means we are going to have to be in this quadrant over here. So then what we do is we go draw our triangle and this is our theta. And then we're going to say that sin is opposite over hypotenuse. You would do Pythagoras and you would find that that is 4. Now move on to the next triangle. So this one says that cos is positive. So that could be here or here. And they tell us that the angle beta is larger than 180. So that would be it, larger than 180 is here and here. So this is clearly the triangle that we're going to have to use. And so what we do is we go draw a little triangle. There we go. And then just pretend that this is your angle. And now we can fill everything in for that triangle. So they tell us that cos is 4 over 5. Now we know that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent would be 4 hypotenuse would be 5. You would do Pythagoras and find that this is 3. But remember that it's negative 3 because it's in the negative y axis. Now, that's the difficult part done. But now what some students still seem to do when they see this is they're like, oh, okay, so that's just going to be cos theta minus cos beta. No, 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 guys. What you got to realize is that this over here is a compound formula. Aha, uh -huh. so check guys, we're looking for a cos and then an A minus B, so that's this one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that cos theta minus beta is going to be, sorry, let me write that down here, cos theta minus beta. And then I'm just going to expand using this formula. So it says cos theta, then cos beta, then there's a plus sin theta, sin beta. And so what I now go and do is I go find each of those little parts on the triangle. So for example, if they say cos theta, then I come to my theta triangle and I get cos. Now cos is um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 4 fifths or 4 over 5. Then cos beta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. But now I'm using the beta triangle. And that's also going to be 4 over 5. That's pretty cool. Plus, then sin theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's in that triangle. So that's 3 over 5. And then sin beta, you're obviously going to have to use the beta triangle now. And so that's going to be opposite, which is now negative 3, over its hypotenuse, which is like that. Then what you do, you don't want to type all of it on the calculator if it's like spread out like this. So just do little pieces at a time. And then this would be minus 9 over 25. And then your final answer is 7 out of 25.